Oh. Hi. Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Really excited about today's video. Multi-part series. This is something that I've been planning on for months and months and months. And what I'm building is a Ultim Rimless System 90U open top aquarium that is going to be for a small group of Mississippi mud turtles using Texas native plants, woods, rocks, and creating a Texas bayou habitat out of this beauty right here. And I am really, really excited to do this because I love aquatic turtles, but I really wanna show you guys for smaller species that you can keep indoor, what you're able to readily accomplish. So what I have in front of me is the, is the Thermal Zoo Pro by uh, Arcadia. This is an amazing product. It has, a, it has two different heat sockets that can handle pretty large spot bulbs, a section for UVB and a section for plant. We are running, um, I still have to check my Ferguson zones once I get the water on here, that'll be second video. Same thing with the heat but it's gonna create enough light to grow our plants. This is an Altum Nature Systems 90U rimless, as well as aftermarket Dynamax stainless steel intake and outtake filter uh, for my filter. For my filter, I am running an Oase Biothermal. Now this filter is a beast. Not only does it have a built-in heater, so as the water is, put, as the water is heated, as the water goes through all three stages of filtration, mechanical, biological, and chemical, it will also be heated at the same time. So I don't need to have an internal tank heater in here that is gonna be showing cores or something that they can pick at, which I think is gonna be really, really good. So I'm gonna get building. Let's do it. So for starters, what I'm gonna use is I got some of these bad boys right here. So this is very close to some of the smaller and larger type of gravel that you find here in some of the biomes with mixtures of mud and other things like that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put a small amount in here. Now I'm not trying to have deep, deep, deep substrate, but I also need some of the live plants that I'm using to thrive. Yeah, a little bit more. I'm going slow because I don't want to overdo it. Okay, so I got just a little bit above a quarter of an inch, which is right about what I'm going to want as far as the rocks are concerned, right? So I'm going to put slightly more in but I'm going to do it a little bit after the fact. And that also is including the other portion of the substrate I'm putting in here. Now this is new to me, but if what I found out in the wild is true, that these plants are going to thrive because most of them, their root systems are through the water. So it's the nutrient nutrients in the water that they're getting their, their, uh, their nutrition from. So I got this beautiful piece of driftwood. I have been soaking this piece for a couple uh, for a couple days, and oh boy, do I have plans for you! So, the the, the whole purpose of this is this isn't going to be a, a crowded aquarium. In fact, I want the turtles to be able to have as much space as they possibly can, while at the same time not impacting filter flow and having a nice the nice ability for water to exit to water to intake here come out here to create the nice uh the the, the nice circular flow as i continue to monitor and see i will take a look at what works best versus what doesn't okay i like that i like that a lot so this is the big center point obviously i'm gonna need to give them the ability to get out and dry off, which I will get to in a little bit. Now I have a whole bunch of Texas native rock that came right, literally right out of the streams that go right into the bayou. 
you can even see some of the crystals. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start very carefully putting the rocks in um, while at the same time making sure that I am weighting this thing down because I know for a fact that it is not waterclogged yet, even though it's been soaking. So you kind of notice how I'm trying to have the, the foundation of this be supported by the actual rocks too, right? So we've got this. I apologize about that terrible noise, but don't worry. It'll be alleviated soon. It is always a learning how you go game with rocks, right? Because you always want to, you're always trying to see, well, what's going to work here? What's going to fit here? There it is. I needed that piece to fall right in there and do that, that musher. However, I'm not sold. Actually, I am sold on that right there. This piece has to be has to be really special where it goes because it's so large. It takes up so much space. So I have an idea. So I do really like, I do really like this layout here. It's simple, it gives them space, and quite frankly, to me, it makes sense. However, there is one potential change I might make. So I actually grabbed some of my Creek stone that I have from Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Texas. So I wanted a couple more anchor points in here than what I originally had. So that way it stays in when the water. Okay. It is pretty safe to say that I am happy with this hardscape to start. Now I may need a couple more rocks and I do have some set aside, but next what I want to do is start planting and figuring out what I want to put, what I want to put in where. So the first thing I want to show you guys is I have some straight, I would like to thank Armand Bayou Nature Center so, so graciously donating a lot of these plants for this build video. Hey guys, they're in Houston, make sure you, make sure you check them out. They are amazing. Uh, all the conservation work they do, but I got some beautiful water lilies in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get these guys put right on into right on into here. Now, as you can see, the, this portion of the roots here, this is what was covered under the mud. However, the other roots, a lot of these up here, while they were close to proximity in the mud, 
they, uh, they, they, a lot of the roots were still exposed into the actual water. So I'll be sure to keep you guys updated with how this actually, you know, performs. Now, these have already been disinfected and wiped off, guys. Um, I did a lot of extensive cleaning with all of this to make sure that these were safe to put in here. I'm gonna do a little bit of pruning here at the base. Don't wanna cut off any of the good stuff. Now again, we'll see how these do. There's a potential that this may not work out the way I'm hoping it, it does, but I have a feeling that it'll be just fine. Especially with the amount of nutrients the turtles are gonna create. Yeah, I think, I think they'll be just fine. So, all right, so what I'm gonna do to help continue to support that, I got another piece of Oklahoma stone. I'm gonna put right like that. Okay, and then I got Uno Moss right here. Okay, so we're getting this cleaned up. We'll see how that does. Okay. Next, we got some of these bad boys right here. Now this was growing like a weed. Uh, and it was growing with all the root systems. This portion here, you can see was in the, in the bog section and all the rest of these were trailing out elsewhere. So I got, so, and these also like to grow out of the water. There we go. Another one of these right down here. Put boom, right like that. And last but not least, got another one of these right here. All right. So again, we're gonna see how these do. I'm pretty excited for it. But again, these, this might need like a substratum or something like that, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. Last but not least for plants. So I'm gonna to do my best to make sure that I'm not getting duckweed in this enclosure. Because that is the last type of critter, living thing that I want in here. Because once it's in, 
it is in permanently. Okay, one. put some here and this stuff is just kind of free free throws or it, it it likes to float essentially but not a really above the water a little bit under so we're gonna see all right I got some on all four sides here and we'll see if any side does a little bit better than any of the others All right, so I'm really happy as far as what I'm getting for as plants are concerned. The next step I have is another type of substrate. Now, white sand is not super common. And like when you're going to your bogs in the northern part of Texas, but when you get towards the coast and you still have those little freshwater pieces in there, that's where you can find some of the, your soil sandy-ish mixtures. So that's what actually exactly what I'm gonna do. So I am gonna put a little bit of this sand in very specific portions of this habitat. So essentially what I'm going for here is I'm trying to have the sand be relative to the actual platform itself. And then as they get further away from the platform, i.e. this huge piece of wood, the sand kind of disappears and turns into a soil sandy leaf litter mix. While at the same time, there is still going to be leaf litter here in the base as well. So this is for aesthetics for me because I'm really interested in this. Uh, again, I was considering using like a substratum instead of the rocks, but with how I've, I'm seeing these plants just out in the bayous here, I'd really rather try this way first because I'm really not trying to have to deal with, uh, you know, a lot of uh, peat and other stuff here at the base, so I don't have to. But I am excited for this because I think it's gonna look, it looks really good, especially as I continue to get this spread out here into the front. All right, so now my, the amount of sand that I'm willing to have in here is in. So I'm gonna open up my other bag of rocks. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is just kind of uh, touch a little bit over here in the front. Kind of with what I was looking, talking about earlier. So it looks more like uh, we are slowly getting into place here and then what i'm gonna do is i got some leaf litter that i've been soaking in for a long time now this is going to release a ton of tannins but that's okay i am perfectly fine with having some tannins in the water because the purigen is really gonna um, eliminate the color but not really all the benefits and i'll get into that next video so all these leaves will eventually sink and there's quite, there's a big potential that they have already will sink the moment we put them in. Go. Now, because these turtles, these turtles are gonna love having a little bit of the leaves in here because it's gonna give them some things to do as far as moving, moving and sifting the substrate around while at the same time of making sure that uh, they are in fact being beneficial to the natural system that will occur here. And just like leaf litter and bioactive terrariums, it's a very similar function in a living aquarium. I'm actually just gonna take out a little bit. There we go. Okay. I also have some various botanicals in here that I have been soaking for some time. Magnolia pods, pear pods, burr oak pods. These are all pods that you can find in and around Texas Bayou. 
give them a quick dip. I'm gonna keep feeling around here to see what other types of, okay, a couple more burr oak pods, bingo. Again, I'm all, I'm all for the nut pods. Now the water initially is gonna be pretty dark because it's gonna release a good amount of tannins and that's okay. I am perfectly fine with this. All right. Okay, so last but not least, Don't need to do a lot, but I am going to just sift a little bit. Okay. So nothing too crazy. And then last but not least, okay, now it's time to fill this up with water and to fill it up, I'm going to be using a carbon bottle. Let me show you guys real quick. So essentially what this does is water comes in from your, from your ground line, i.e. your hose. It pumps the, the hose water down and back out through your exit. And what it does is this detoxifies ammonia, nitrites, as well as make your water aquarium ready. I wouldn't recommend this for like discus fish or expensive fish. But when you're do working with things like turtles and alligators, it is absolutely an amazing product to use. And it's, you can pick it up, disconnect it, and move it. So we got the hose coming out of it here. And we run it all the way into the showroom. OK, so I, I got my hose with the carbon bottle hooked up. OK, I got my hose slowly filling this up right like this. I'm gonna attach this right here, right like this. And now we wait. Okay, so the reason I took the hose cap off is because quite frankly, it, was, it would take me forever to do a 100% water change. Now, the reason I don't recommend using just the hose by itself when keeping fish or anything is it can, it can really hinder with the back pressure how well the carbon bottle performs as well as have a higher chance of creating micro bubbles, which cannot be so good for some types of fish. So when I'm gonna be doing my 40 to 60% water changes, we will be using the hose nozzle. But since this is the first time, there's nothing in here and it's gonna cycle, I was okay using just the hose with a carbon bottle attached. So in my filter loadout, I am using the bag that has Purigen in it. Now, in my next video, I'll talk a little bit more about Purigen and why it's amazing and what the maintenance looks like with it. And then for my biological media, I am using Seachem's Matrix. And when I go to put my cycling fish in here, uh, this will be the filter media that we're using to catch all the nitrifying bacteria, as well as, you know, the different pads and different uh, other things that we have in there. Okay, so filter has been primed, filter is running. This is about the depth that I'm comfortable going with with these guys. So spots to get out of the water. I'm gonna see how they do because there's a nice flat spot right up here. There's only gonna be two. However, I might dedicate a larger rock or something right here on the top. Uh, something that can cross mingle with, uh, with the wood that's sticking out. So that way it's a little bit easier uh, for them to get in and out. But I'm gonna see how this tank goes. So what you guys can expect, a couple updates from me over the next week or two, as far as how this tank cycles. We're gonna hopefully get some Texas bluegills or some sunfish or something like that to put in here to live with them. And those will be the fish that we're using to cycle our aquarium to get the nitrogen process. 
uh, the nitrification process going and then we can get our turtles so this is going to be a uh, this is going to be a couple videos but this is just starting up uh, and I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you as it matures as well as keep you guys updated on how all these plants do again I'm I'm really happy I got to do this because this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time I have all these aquatic supplies here and I like don't have any visual to show people what you can do for your indoor turtles, especially your smaller ones, map turtles, mud turtles. But if it's like your cooters or your radio sliders, then your only goal should be outside. So again, my name's Josh Halter. I'm the owner and founder of the Bio Dude. You can come see this at my point of sale Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 and Saturday, 10 to 5. And you can visit my website, hit that like and subscribe button. The dude abides. So you can, we can use the hose. Oh, let me try the, what's the full? <laughs> That's my bad. Hold on, I gotta change it. I'm so sorry. <laughs>